Hello, warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Dr. Subodh Kumar Jha, and my topic today is language and literature. As the very topic suggests, there are two key components of this topic. One is language, and another is literature. So let's begin first with what is language. Language, we all agree that it is communication. Language is used for various purposes, ranging from daily discourse to the acquisition of knowledge and power. Even the introspection that helps us define and refine our thoughts depends chiefly on language. And that is the importance of language in our life. How can we clarify our thoughts if we do not learn to talk to ourselves? We need language for our quality of existence. So whatever objective, whatever the purpose, we use language, well, in every use, language is perfect in all its styles. Language of ordinary uses, we must keep in mind, is different from the language of literature. The style of language that comes to us through literature is really fascinating. This is because literature is a discourse in which the creativity and complexity of language are designed with a wide range of styles. This statement, that means when we say that it is a discourse with creativity and complexity, well, this statement anticipates that the literary language is born with certain linguistic features. These features can be metaphor, simile, assonance, alliteration, a refrain, that is the repetition of a word or phrase, unusual syntactic patterns, ambiguity, that is the double or multiple meanings of a word. A word may mean several things, and that is called ambiguity. Then poeticism is there, mixing of styles or registers, paradoxical use of language, cohesion, and several other things. Well, this use poses a challenge, a challenge to analyze, analyze a specific style of language used in a poem, a story, a drama, or novel. Here, we can understand the difference by trying to transform a sentence in Hindi. Actually, it is part of a couplet. Karat karat abhyasa se jadamati hot sujan. Now, just change the words or the pattern. If we say bar bar abhyas karne se jadamati ya maha murkh bhi sujan the impact is gone. Isitarase, when we say Hajaron Sal Nargis Apni Benuri Peroti hai, Badi Mushkil Sehota hai, Chaman me Dida var Pada. It's very difficult to have the similar impact if we change the order and change it into prose form. Or when we say, my heart lifts up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. The proverbs that we come across in all the languages, well, they all have this evocative use of language. Take, for example, Adhijal Gagari Chalakat Jai. We cannot translate it in English in its literal way. Well, it has to be an empty vessel sounds much. Similarly, when we say, ho nahar birwan ke hot hai chikne paat, 
we need to translate it as morning shows the day. So literal translation won't do here. Or when we say naach na jane angna tedha. So this will be a bad carpenter quarrels with his tools. So this is the use of language, creative use of language, which is different from the ordinary use of language. Here, what is to be noted is the choice and arrangement of words. The choice and arrangement of words in such an expression is crucially different. Crucially significant differences between language of ordinary uses and language of literature is of primary importance. This difference can be found in terms of using simile, metaphor, symbols, and so many other literary devices. These linguistic features are obvious and conspicuous in the language of children as well. Let's take an extract from a folk tale, Hansel and Gretel. And it is a suitable example of the use of assonance, consonance, and rhyming pattern in each line. Duckling, duckling, here is Gretel. Duckling, duckling, here is Hansel. No breeze or fairy far and wide, duckling, come and give us a ride. Mark the repetition of daw sound, duckling, duckling. This is consonance or daw alliteration. Again, fairy far, the fa sound. Then when we pay attention to the rhyme scheme, we find the first line, griddle, that rhymes with the second line that is Hansel. Similarly, the third line wide rhymes with the fourth line right. If we have to tell the rhyme scheme, it is A, A, B, B. So such things we find only in a literary piece. And these devices are not only ornamental, they are functional. They reinforce the feeling, the emotion, the idea that they wish to convey. This is because literature is a wonderful blend of language, communication, expression, cognitive value, moral value, and above all, aesthetic value. And that is why we define literature as the crystallization of life's experiences with the sharp edges of art and the transparency of language. The art of literature has three cardinal factors, the author, the reader, and the language. This art, the art of literature, consists in the communication brought about between the author and the reader. That is why the meaning of literature lies in the kind of communication which this art sets up. Literature communicates experience. The experience that is complete, whole, and entire. Nothing more, yet nothing less. The crux of the problem is that an experience does not happen in language. Language in literature is a means. It is not the end. And its meaning is not what it states. That is not the literal meaning. The meaning is what it suggests. Because the meaning cuts across what a word phrase or sentence means in the literary piece, which always has ample room for the context. Here, we must keep in mind that as soon as the context comes in, the language lags behind expression. The meaning has to be read between the lines. We can't understand the expression 
unless we read between the lines. That means we look for what it suggests. Literature becomes a process of exploring language. We have to dive deep to find out what it actually means, what it wants to suggest. And language of exploring is literature. Literature is the place, we can say, where language can be best used. And the discovery of language through literature is a great feat. We all enjoy discovering the spatial meaning in the spatial context, in the spatial situation. We all know that language is not static, it is dynamic. It is a developing process. It keeps on changing. New uses come. Some words, they go out of use. New words are quiet. And this development that comes in language, well, we come across only through literature. Literature can keep abreast with the new changes taking place in language. So we can say, that literature is a rich resource of language motivation and enjoyment. Literature, we must say, is indispensable to language learning both for the native language learners and the second language learners. We are here with the second language consideration. In the first case, that is, with regards to the native learners, literature means enrichment and reinforcement of language. But in the case of second language learners, it means exposure to the linguistic nuances of the target language. Reading literary texts will help our students understand and appreciate multiple levels of meaning, because literature, there is no one fixed meaning. There are layers of meaning. And this is because of metaphors and phonological patterning in many other types of texts. This is what Lazar asserts. In fact, the use of literary texts, even in second language classroom, yield some reliable foundations. In this, the learners are always stimulated in using the target language. Let's quote Laza. He says that pieces of literature can very effectively be used in our classroom as a source of language use for the simple reason that literature exposes students to complex themes and phrase unexpected use of language. There are key words. One is theme is com complex. It is not very simple. And then we have the complexity of language as well. The phrase uses, the unexpected uses, where all these are to be found in a literature. That's why Literary texts generate many questions about what means what and how things come to mean what they mean. In a classroom, reaction to the same text may vary widely. Why this variation? If there is a definite meaning, well, every student should come out with one response. But this is not the case. We have multiplicity of responses. This is because a word, a sentence in literature has several connotations. It has several meaning, several layers of meaning. The thoughts and ways of thinking of the students in a class are provoked in group or peer work activities. When they do group work or peer work, students they come across different meanings because they explore different ways. They come across multi-layers of textual meaning. 
this discovery of multiplicity encourages them to approach text very closely because there is a joy of discovery well this should be the meaning this should also be the meaning and so they are goaded they are encouraged to explore more and more a good piece of literature also encourages them to take note of the linguistic features they encounter in the text and emboldened with the validity of their responses and discovery this enlightened students they struggle with two things first the deviated structure in poetry because there is not the normal use and another is cohesion or any other linguistic feature that are found in the text obviously using literary texts that provide a rich context can enrich learners language in fact learning language through authentic context is acquisition like process and language learning becomes acquisition like process because as coley and slater rightly point out encouraging students to deal imaginatively with literature enables learners to shift that focus of their attention beyond the mere mechanical aspects of the foreign language system when a novel play or short story is explored over a period of time the result is that the reader begins to inhabit the text it he becomes an inhabitant of the world of literature he or she is drawn into the book becomes a part of it so pin pointing what individual words or phrase may mean becomes less important than pursuing the development of the story so a word is created and through this word the learners learn how to negotiate different situation in life through language so language becomes transparent the fiction summons the whole person into its own world this leads to competence in language use and here being competent in language means knowing the fact that in real use language means more than it touch a literary text yields this power of language and the learners come to know this power discover this power through literary text the impression readers achieve from such text is always authentic as they can know the real written language along with variability in linguistic structures of language and the ways of connecting ideas and precision in expression take for example the initial sentence of the guide a novel by ark narayan it begins he welcomed the intuition now mark the use of the word welcome in association with intuition this is the ironic use of the word the subtle ironical twist with which welcomed connects with intuition defines or reflects on he it is also important to know that the novel begins with he a pronoun normally a pronoun is used when there is a noun but without the noun without the antecedent well it begins with he now this he an intriguing third person is very much within his rights to call down the intrusion an intrusion in reality is never welcome but why does he welcome but his unease remains unvoiced 
Why? Now, the question is, is welcoming volitional or conditional or situational? How does it connect with the doer, then with the object to which doing is directed or addressed? And then finally with the atmosphere, the environs of the place. Seeking out proper answers to these questions amounts to reducing the apparent duality to a single word. And this reduction not only provides a good exposure to literature, but also a good exercise in the features of language. Let's take more example. What shall I do with this absurdity? O oh heart, O oh troubled heart, this caricature, discrepant is that has been tied to me as to a dog's tail. Mark the repetition, O oh heart, and then it is followed by O oh troubled heart. And then discrepant is that has been tied to me as a dog's tail. These lines demand attention to the tone used. Your tone is very important. These lines express dissatisfaction with old age that had begun bothering the poet. The poet is no more happy and that's why he is using such an expression. So, in these lines we find a powerful and disgusting picture of the old man's senility and physical weakness. The poet does not know what to do with this absurdity, this discrepant old age. So, he compares it with some rattling thing tied to a dog's tail. This metaphoric use, using dog, the comparison with dog's tail is very important evocative and it suggests the dissatisfaction of the poet. He wants to convey that his eyes and ears, his imagination and passions are as strong as ever, perhaps stronger than even in his youth. But if we associate these lines with other lines, we infer that perhaps it is time that he bade farewell to poetry and took reading Plato and Plotinus, getting interested in metaphysics. Else, he will be insulted and his name dragged in mire. He knows his limitation. He knows what his heart wants, but what his body refuses to do. So it's better to accept the age gracefully. So the readers move ahead holding the midway of two extremes of reception and production. Mere reading of literary pieces is not enough. We have to go deeper. We have to use such expressions in our own use of language and only then our language learning becomes perfect. Of course, they need the help of the teachers. It is the teachers who help them receive as well as produce the real use of language. The teachers may present different activities with varied techniques to ensure that the learners achieve these goals. It is obvious, therefore, that literature comes with new strengths and unexpected language use, which a learner must be aware of. The process of enriching linguistic competence by way of drawing pleasure from literature is an ever fascinating activity and so is adding to the joy of reading by making a linguistic approach to the literary text. It is obvious, therefore, that literature can play the most important role in teaching language, provided complexities of language are adequately analyzed or focused on.
This is very important. Unless we adequately analyze the complexity of uh, language, the using literature in classroom is useless. We have to understand the relationship between language and literature, explore it further, and this exploration must also be backed up by uses. And if we do it properly, dexterously, literature can expose the learners to varieties of uses of words as well as structures of specific purposes and thereby enrich their linguistic experiences. Similarly, linguistic competence can help the learners understand a piece of literature in a better way. So, there is a close link between language and literature. Language helps understand literature in a better way and literature enriches our language. We have dealt with the relation between language and literature. We shall meet again in our next session. Till then, thank you and goodbye.